Look at that. Oh my God, my leg has fallen asleep. Okay, I've been sitting here for so long. And for those of you guys who don't know, rim light is light that's coming and hitting your character from the back. <laughs> Pause. All right, what's up guys? Today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. So I've been drawing your guys' characters, but I think it's time we do some characters of my own. And I saw this in a TikTok, but somebody said you could use a random word generator, which I have here, to come up with like a few different words and use that as the base for your character. So I think this should be a really good exercise on my creativity, which is quite low. So I have my generator set to three random words. I think three should be a sweet spot for us and all words are on the table, I think aside from uh, swearing. So we're gonna just give it a try right now. Let's see. Okay, the words are rich, put, P-U-T, and vi, V-I-E. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, this might be a problem, guys. Let's see another set. Hiss, stamp, and wealth. Okay, there's there's something there, something there. Okay, here's another set. Jump, tidy, adaptable. Hmm. Okay, so you guys kind of get what I mean, and we're gonna just roll with this. We're gonna see how many characters we can come up with during this period of time where I'm shooting this video. But this should be fun. It'll be a great exercise in our creativity. Okay, so after a few generations, I think it's best to switch it to adjectives only, because I've been getting some weird words that I do not understand. Okay, guys, so this one's interesting. Tight, screeching, and scary. And you know what? You guys can feel free to draw along with me and come up with your own characters with these words. Let's do it. And we're going to try to keep these characters PG. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with some sketches, some compositions, and decide which one to go with. And then we can add some colors. But this might take a little while. So I'll check back in with you guys when I have something a little bit solid. All right, guys. So through the magic of editing, we now have a sketch. And this is based on the words tight, screeching, and scary. So with the word tight, the first thing that came to my mind was something that was restricting, something I was bounding, and something that's really restricting your freedom to move. So I made this scene look like she's almost being trapped or being dragged down by something that's holding on to her. And as a result, she's screeching and this is a scary situation. So it's not really just a strict character design based on the words, there's a little bit more of a story to it. And that's how I usually like to draw. So now that we have this, let's go in with a second layer and let's add in some colors. Let's give it some atmosphere. So for this piece, I think I want something cold, something dark, and I want the colors to have a good amount of contrast between cool and warm. Now I'm choosing a brownish kind of desaturated orange color for the hair because the background is blue. And what is the complementary color to blue? Orange. Now when you guys are coming up with your own compositions and your own characters, it's good to think about these things. All right, look at that. She's looking super expressive. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm drawing a character or a scene, I'm always trying to tell a story. You know, I'm trying to make up like a story in my mind, something that the character is going through or just whatever's happening in the moment. And I try to let the direction of the painting kind of follow that story. I personally enjoy doing that because it just makes me that much more invested in the drawing on my canvas because there's a story that I'm trying to tell. And speaking of story, you know, I think my story for her is she is just a really misunderstood monster who's being subjugated to mistreatment for simply being born the way she is. It brings a tear to my eye. All right, there we go. So this is a pretty good color on her face, but I think, you know, the back of her head needs to stand out a little bit more from the background. Now, what I could do is I could give her a rim light from the back or I can lighten the background behind her head. So I'm going to just try a little bit of both and see what works better. Okay, so this is the lighter background behind her head. I don't know how I feel about that. Even with just this basic idea down, I think I like the rim light a lot better. And for those of you guys who don't know, rim light is light that's coming and hitting your character from the back. <laughs> Pause. Okay, so I want to make these bounding elements in the foreground really dark. I think really dark colors like this kind of convey a really restricting and constricting atmosphere, which goes hand in hand with the word tight. I want these elements to look like they're just sticking to her and they're just really latched on and there's no way to break free, almost like black tar. Let's get a bit of it reaching up onto her head too, just to give it that sense of urgency, like it's going to consume her. And she does have wings, but they're also going to be kind of consumed by this darkness. And of course, no matter how difficult the struggle. We cannot forget the boobas. I know my audience. For those of you guys who are wondering, these are all the brushes that I'm using, okay? 6B pencil and the round brush are the only two brushes that I'm using for this entire piece. I've always, always maintained that you do not need fancy brushes to make fancy paintings. It's about you. It's about the artist. It's not about your brush. If your painting is dookie, you are dookie, not your brush. Here's the thing, you don't want the tools that you're using to feel like tools. You want them to feel 
like an extension of your hand. Doesn't matter if people hate on your brushes. If people are like, oh, the basic round brush can't do this, can't do that. Well, the basic round brush for me feels like an extension of my hand. So it does everything that it can for me. And don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Okay, and last but not least, let's add some special effects. Okay, some chromatic aberration here. Oh yeah, that, ooh, ooh, okay. <laughs> you know what? Let's do some half tone. Okay, so here's a trick. Add a soft light or hard light layer, use an airbrush, find a color that matches the color of your light, and brush that on. Give your character's rim light a bit of a glow. Look at that. Okay, now I'm gonna race back into it. So this is our first drawing based on our three words, tight, screeching, and scary. Now, this turned out way better than I expected. I just surprised myself at every turn, guys. What, what's going on? I think that took about like 35 to 40 minutes for this one drawing. So we're going to do one more, okay? We're going to do another set of words and we're going to try to come up with something equally as cool as this. I'm really, really digging this piece. Three, two, one, generate. Oh, all right. So for this one, we have the words sweet, combative, and graceful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Pinterest, I'm gonna look up some references for outfits, for pose inspirations and stuff like that, and just kind of incorporate that into my drawing. And I did that for the first piece as well to kind of figure out what a person's face looks like when they're screaming. So if you are ever unsure about what you're drawing, go on Pinterest, find some references. Okay guys, I found a sick pose reference, so I think this is where we're gonna go with. So I kind of know the pose now, but in terms of the outfit and the design for the character, we're gonna have to do some sketching, we're gonna kind of have to figure it out, you know, the shapes for the character, the kind of flow. And speaking of shapes and flow, we're doing a tutorial on that on Patreon this month. So here is a sketch of our second character based on the words sweet, combative, and graceful. So sweet, you know, obviously she's got a little burb, you know, it's very sweet, very cute. And for the word combative, she's got a bow, she knows how to use it, she can easily destroy you. And the word graceful is captured pretty well by archery. I think this pose itself is very graceful. And I also gave her some pretty long hair that drapes off of her shoulders, you know, again, graceful. So I think we've got a good combination of all three words. Now it's time to add in some colors some rendering to make this piece really come alive. I'm going to try to just add in a bunch of random colors and see if I can just Gaussian blur this to make it look like she's in a forest. We'll see how this works. So we're just going to get all kinds of different hues of green in here. And if you're feeling too lazy to draw a background, this might be the method for you. But if you do run away from your background responsibilities in your everyday life, just be careful because I might come after you. I might break into your house. I might steal your food. I might punch your dog. Okay, so now we're gonna apply a layer of Gaussian blur. Let's see. That's pretty good. Okay, sick. All right, now let's color the character. How fast was that? <laughs> So now we're gonna go onto the skin of the character. Let's give her a, a very light hair color here. Almost like a grayish color. This is like my OC Kara, but in medieval archery form. Okay, so the overall color scheme here is looking pretty good. Now we're gonna add in some variation. It's important to add in some shadows, okay? Since I added in a background that looks like trees in the sunlight, I'm gonna have to make sure that the lighting on our character matches with the environment. You wanna make sure that whatever scene you're drawing is coherent and works as one whole. Okay, I don't know what happened just now, but my camera just stopped recording out of nowhere. Uh, I didn't do anything to it. I think maybe this is a sign that I should quit YouTube. <laughs> what do you guys think of that? Okay, so now that we have our basic color scheme down, we can go into a little bit more of the variation in terms of the colors and the rendering. There we go, that's looking good. Now get some black color, not black. Never use black in your paintings. Dark, dark is what I meant. Now you're gonna see me drawing the eyebrows with a lot of flat round brush kind of technique because I like to treat the eyebrows as shapes and not individual lines of hair. Okay, so at this stage, I'm really liking it. You know, I'm flipping the canvas back and forth, making sure there's no glaring major mistakes here. I'm really liking the way the character's looking. So I think we can go into smaller details, refinement, and doing a little bit of line art. Now, it might seem counterintuitive because I always do line art at the very end. And this is just my personal preference. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. I just don't like being too restricted by my line art from the very beginning. I like to keep it free flowing and I like to make adjustments as I go. I don't want line art to be there to keep telling me what to do. You know, I don't like anybody telling me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. And while we're on the topic of detail, let's give her some rendering on the hair. 
you can see the highlights are very simple. So we're just using basically two brush strokes and then erasing back into it to create this illusion that there is a streak of highlight, just like that. So I would say that's looking pretty good. Now I wanna get a bit more detail onto the armor. Quick tip for painting armor, you wanna make sure that it's reflecting the colors in its environment. So the green that you see in the background and presumably the blue from the sky, right? You want the armor, if it's shiny, to reflect all of that. And there needs to be a lot of contrast between the light and the dark for something to look shiny. It's looking good, guys. We're nearing the end. The end is near. Now, guess what we're gonna do? I'm gonna add a little burb. Yeah. Give him some highlights. Let's give him some eyes and a little beak. Perfect. And I think this should be about it. I'm just doing some more small adjustments here and there, but the character overall is looking really good. And I think she really captures the uh, words sweet, combative, and graceful. Woo! Look at that. Oh my god, my leg has fallen asleep. <laughs> okay, I've been sitting here for so long. At the end of my paintings, one thing I always like to do is I like to bump up the saturation a bit because usually when I'm painting, I tend to not get as saturated as I would like. So it's a little cheat for you guys. And to just finish it off, let's give her some effects. Let's do some Gaussian blur with the pencil just around the edges of the painting to kind of focus your eye up top. On the main subject. There we go, guys. There is our second piece based off of our word prompts. I think this challenge is a lot more difficult than any other ones I've done before because it really tests your creativity. Now, taking a look at the two pieces I've made, they've got different vibes and I'm very happy with both of them. So let me know, guys, which one is your favorite. Let me know in the comments. So if you guys decided to follow along with me during this video and try out these words for yourself and make your own characters, go on Instagram, post your characters and tag me. I want to see them. Honestly, this is a 10 out of 10 great exercise to just get your creative juices flowing. I've always wanted to try this and now we've finally done it. I hope you guys like the results. I hope you were entertained and maybe you learned something new along the way. So since this video is not sponsored, go ahead and check out my Patreon if you want to support more of the work that I do. And with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. My camera keeps shutting off because it's so hot in here, guys. It's hot in Canada and it's November. Global warming, guys. Stop using plastics. Stop killing the turtles do better. Look, if you guys don't care about the environment, you don't care about the earth, that's fine. But do this for my camera, yeah? Be a little bit more environmentally conscious for my camera so it stops shutting off. Testing, 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 test